First, though, we want to talk about corporate America and its support of get out the vote efforts. Under Armour today announcing a new initiative to give its employees time to volunteer and vote. A number of new initiatives, in fact. It's also introducing a run to vote challenge. Patrick Frisk, the Under Armour CEO, is joining us now to discuss this. And Patrick, it has been an interesting um, sort of evolution of corporate America when it comes to political involvement and voting involvement. Um, As someone, I believe this is the first U.S. election that you are going to be um, voting in as a native Swede. Um, What do you think that corporate America needs to do in terms of what should the level of activism be when it comes to voting and, and politics? Yeah, it's interesting. I guess if you would have asked me five years ago if we would have been uh, driving an initiative like this, um, I would have probably uh, uh, not uh, been able to foresee, you know, where we're at right now in in terms of what's going on in society and, in general, what the um, uh, you know the general feel is out there also in, inside of our own community uh, as it relates to Under Armour. But, you know, we've we've been working really hard as a brand, as an enterprise, as a company over the last three years to really. Um, define our path forward. And and as part of that, we've gone really deep into uh, our value set as a company, as well as really understanding our purpose and our place here in the world. And we think that when we, when we look at what's going on right now, when we, when we hear our, our, the voices of our, uh, of our athletes and of our, um, of our employees, our teammates, as we call them, uh, it's clear to us that this is one moment when it's time for us to step up and really lead with our values. And, and, and one of our values is stand for equality. And ultimately we think that, you know, um, uh, democracy is uh, is that, and I think it's also the ultimate team sport, right? So for us, it makes a ton of sense to try to do what we can to just simply make it as easy as possible for our teammates to get out there and participate. Now, it's not just voting, of course. A number of companies have also been active on specific political issues. When you look at something like Black Lives Matter, for example, where a lot of athletes are advocating for that, athletes who you may be contracted with, is that also, I mean, do you think that it's important for corporations to also speak up on those specific issues? And will we see more of Under Armour doing that? I think for us, it's, it's um, you know, being supportive, of course. I think, again, leaning into the values here, I think for us as a brand, um, you know, so clearly uh, defining standing for equality as one of our one of our uh, values, it, it, it's natural for us to to support Black Lives Matter, you know, in this case, right? And um, again, I'm coming back to what we're trying to accomplish here with our uh, Run to Vote initiative is is really just simply being um, a, partly a resource, you know, in terms of, you know, on our homepage, our site, giving the, you know, accurate information to our teammates and also to to our communities uh, and to our consumers of of how to get this done as easily as as frictionless as possible. So it's just just facilitating the process. That's all we're trying to accomplish here. And I think that is that is the right way to think about uh, you know our our role, if you like, going forward uh, to some extent also in society. Right. I mean, it's really a an important um, uh, thing right now, uh, and will be for us going forward is partaking. Uh, in a deeper way, as long as it's in line with our values and ultimately our purpose. Hi, Patrick. Dan Roberts here. Uh, while we have you, let's talk about the business because it's yep. been tough sledding in some ways for Under Armour in the last few years. Uh, you guys recently got out of the Berkeley and the UCLA deals you had, and Under Armour has a number of big deals with colleges. I'd ask while we have you, should we look for Under Armour to, to try to end any more of those deals to save costs? And then Really, it's part of a larger question. A lot of analysts believe that Under Armour right now is maybe trying this shrink to grow strategy. That is, mm-hmm. focus more on profit rather than revenue, rather than sales, uh, put less supply out in the market. Is that something that you guys are already doing or, or thinking would be effective uh, on this turnaround effort? I think two things. I think first, uh, to, to answer your question around you know our involvement with um, with our athletes and our schools, we're committed to being a team sports brand. You know, one of the unique things about Under, sport, uh, Under Armour was we were born in team sports, and we are one of the very few brands in the world that actually have permission to be on the field or on the court, if you like. And we're going to continue to support um, you know our teams 
uh, just to give you a sense of the scale, we, we, we have a relationship with over a thousand schools right now in the U.S., for example. So we're definitely not exiting that at all. What we're doing, though, is we're just making sure that where we're engaging, we're able to activate against it. In other words, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a partnership ultimately, but for us to be able to do uh, the job that we should be doing, which is really partnering and being able to drive the relationship. Uh, we just need to do that with fewer uh, partners at this point in time, simply because uh, of the resources that we have and where we feel that we're at right now as a brand. Um, I think in terms of the shrink to grow, I think everybody will be shrinking somewhat, right, coming out of COVID. Uh, and for us, uh, as we have done all of the work, we feel to really understand where we will compete, who we're for and who we are as a brand going forward. We're just simply making decisions of what that means to us in terms of distribution as well. And we're pretty clear uh, uh, in terms of where we should be as a brand showing up going forward. And, you know, that will kind of unfold as we go into 21, 22 and beyond. Um, and, uh, you know, at the very core of it, what we're trying to do is, is really reposition Under Armour as a premium brand. Uh, and that's where we're playing. That's where we want to play. That's where we're going to play going forward. So uh, we're going to be in athletic performance. We're going to be one of the big brands in the world globally. Uh, and we're going to do that in a more premium way going forward. It's good to hear you make that statement because critics are always going to be critics and might say, you should be going in athleisure. So you've made the comment about performance, but how do you turn a company like Under Armour around when there's still the thing that investors are worried about, you know, getting past the accounting issues, which are still under investigation. The stock is down 52 weeks. Uh, it's about 40 percent. You're setting it on the right path. But how do you put all of that in the background and in the past? Ultimately, for us, it's all about focusing on the consumer. And I think that is one of the, uh, the really big uh, things that we've done as a company over the last three years is, we have really, you know, first of all, just simply understanding, uh, you know, our positioning as a brand, like you said, in athletic performance, making sure that we understand the consumer in that space, and then ultimately making decisions that line up with that consumer. So that goes into everything in terms of the product we build, the messaging that we do, and the distribution that we have to be able to reach that consumer. So we have been building uh, very rapidly and very thoroughly our capabilities in consumer insights, in digital, uh, in our ability to go to market cohesively with both product and with um, the marketing. And what you'll, you're, you actually will see, and you're, you're seeing right now, is Under Armour being very consistent around the globe in terms of how we show up, what we say, what we do, and also driving a much more intense innovation agenda. You know, the, the, the innovations that we have now in the pipeline are lined up with the consumer. So we're feeling very excited about being able to continue to launch these innovations in a better way with stronger language and marketing going forward to win back market shares as we turn the corner here into 21 and beyond. Patrick, um, I, I want to follow up on that a little bit, because this is something also that um, the founder, Kevin Plank, has talked about for quite some time is, is getting more premium, as you alluded to earlier. And yet Under Armour hasn't quite gotten there, right? Um, we, we have seen perhaps over inventory. So we see the Under Armour merchandise making its way down the line into discounters, for example. So the price point then going down, the market perhaps saturated with that. So can you sort of connect the dots? Walk me through exactly how you get more premium and how you communicate to the customer that you're that you're going in that direction. Yeah. So first of all, I'd, you know, I'd just like to uh, um, give you know Kevin, my my partner, a um, and a tremendous amount of credit for being able to create the fastest growing sports brand the world has ever seen. And that's been really important to us because we actually had scale when we began this work. Um, and, and really what happens is, you know, when you grow at the speed that, that Under Armour was growing at, you know, over, over a, a very long period, 26 quarters, you get to a point suddenly when you actually do have to take a pause and re kind of re-engineer and rejig yourself. The reason it takes a little bit longer than I think people would like, right, and there's, of course, uh, uh, you know, anticipation of what this means, is the fact that, you know, in our world of making stuff, you know, we, we, we make stuff, we make about 840 to 900,000 things a day. Um, it takes time because of calendar, because of supply chain and other things to make change happen as quickly as, quickly as you would like, especially in a coordinated way when you want to make sure you're coordinating 
coordinating that across the entire globe, across channels of distribution, across categories. And you also have to make trade-offs during that time. So for us, it's taken uh, about three years. Um, and part of that is because we started with a calendar that's about 24 months long. And when you start the work, you can't start from day one. It takes you about 12 months to set it up. So what you've seen in 2020, actually, is, is Under Armour coming out leaner, meaner, and more coordinated, more consistent than ever before because we've now done the hard work. Um, and so we're now turning the corner here into 2021, really ready to compete again. We'll compete as a smaller company to, to Adam's point earlier. Yes, we will be a little smaller because simply we've had to go through COVID where we had to take almost a quarter of revenue right out of the year. But ultimately, we believe a better company, a more focused company, a company that understands who they are, who we are, and understands where we're going. And um, you know, time will tell, I guess, but we feel very confident in, in the work that we've done and the path that we have going forward. Patrick, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. And I have to say, as a native Baltimorean, I, I root for you in that aspect in terms of uh, what, what Under Armour has done for the economy of that city. Patrick Frisk, Under Armour CEO, please come back and see us again. Thank you. you bet. Thank you very much. Julia. Thanks. Take care. Thanks. Hey investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up to the minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance and information on how to manage your money every day wherever you are.